Hello. I'm here now to talk about Pirates of the Caribbean 4 on Stranger Tides. I just saw it yesterday. Didn't really get a lot of good reviews, but uh, this review will be generally positive. I did like it. And I thought the apple would be appropriate. The whole Barbosa thing. I don't know. I was also hungry. Anyway. Movie starts out Jack's in London, which is strange to begin with because, I mean, last you hear of him at the end of the third movie, he's sailing off to Florida. Well, basically what it turns out is he went and searched for the Fountain of Youth, found out that there were certain things that were required in order to actually get there. Well, aside from that, and then you can't just drink the water of the Fountain of Youth. There's like a ritual and crap. But anyway. Um, also, and also, while this is going on, the Spanish discover Ponce de Leon's notes, and Spanish's King Ferdinand, whatever number he is, sends his own fleet there. And then it turns out that Barbosa is actually now a privateer under King George II, I believe, to find the Fountain of Youth first. And it turns out the Spanish aren't interested in the eternal life. Ba Spanish, being, being very, very Catholic, Consider the Fountain of Youth to be an abomination, and their goal is to destroy it. So it's a race between the English and the Spanish. And initially, the Spanish are in the lead. Well, meanwhile, when Jack's in London, he finds out someone's impersonating him. It turns out to be Penelope Cruz in a corset. And she pulls it off pretty well, apparently. But anyway, she knocks Jack out, and he wakes up on the Queen Anne's Revenge. Now, bewildering as that may be, he's quite frightened. But he manages to convince the crew that since no one on the ship has actually seen Blackbeard, well, those of you who don't know, the Queen Anne's Revenge is Blackbeard's flagship. Anyway, he convinces the crew that since no one's seen Blackbeard and he never comes out of his cabin, that Blackbeard is in fact not on the ship, and that encourages them to do a mutiny. Jack climbs up onto the deck and screams the ship is ours. The door behind him opens, and a cloud of smoke and really eerie music walks Blackbeard, who through some kind of weird-ass black magic has all the ropes of the ship tie everybody else up. And that, and I like Jack's quote right after he gets captured. It's like, Captain, I would like to report a mutiny. I can point fingers and name... I can point name... Oh, crap, what was it? I can name fingers and point names. I can name fingers and point names. Yeah, he messed that up. I couldn't even remember it. But anyway. So Blackbeard is interested in the Fountain of Youth because there was a prophecy that someone would kill him, a one-legged man, within a week. Or two weeks. Now, as it turns out, when you're seeing the beginning of the movie, Barbosa lost his leg when the Black Pearl was attacked and captured by Blackbeard. That's really funny. Apparently, he doesn't sink the ships. He be they all become miniature and go in these little bottles that he keeps in his, in his office cabin, whatever you want to call it. And they can be restored. Jack, of course, wants the pearl back. It turns out Penelope Cruz is actually, her name, her character's name is Angelica, is Blackbeard's daughter, and she's going there to save her father. Now, I actually, being a history nut, looked this up, and the reigns of Ferdinand and the sixth, I think he is, and George the second, both their reigns start after Blackbeard's death in 1718. However, they actually do explain this, and they say that Blackbeard was killed, and he was resurrected from the dead, and now he just needs to sustain that life before Barbosa kills him again. I like that they did that. Um, so anyway, they have to go through this bizarre ritual, and, the, and apparently what the ritual of the Fount of Youth is, you don't, don't drink the water, you have to steal the youth. Basically, it's like, if you, you, there's two silver chalices, one is filled with the water of the fountain, one is filled with the water of the fountain and the tear of a mermaid. And the one who drinks the one with the mermaid's tear steals all the years of life that the person that drinks the one without the tear has. And well, anyway, so yeah, they need to capture a mermaid, which turns out mermaids are quite vicious creatures. They lure you with their beauty, then drag you underwater and kill you. So it's a massive battle between the pirates and Blackbeard's crew and the mermaids, and they eventually do succeed in capturing one who seems to be different and not vicious than the rest. And this guy that Blackbeard has, for some reason, he's a, a missionary, and I guess they were going to use him to be the sacrifice for Blackbeard. 
it's really funny. Like he says something, and Jack goes like, "I agree with the missionary's position." See, so, yeah, there's a lot of subtle, double entendre humors in this thing. But anyway, so they end. It's this really bizarre thing how they all figure out how to get to the fountain, which requires going through a puddle of water on the ceiling of a cave. But anyway, they get to the fountain of youth. Then as soon as the Blackbeard gets there, the Spanish get there. So it's a big battle between Blackbeard, Barbosa, Jack, Penelope, Penelope Cruz's character, Angelica, and the um, Spanish. And throughout this whole time, the missionary was fatally wounded. And he actually falls in love with the mermaid that they captured. And he, while fatally wounded, goes all the way back to where they left her to set her free. So, and she in turn, somehow or other, saves his life. I don't know how she does it, it isn't really explained, but she takes him underwater and somehow heals him, and then you don't you ever see the two of them again. And like how they, the mermaid's name was Serena, which I thought was neat, because you know it's Siren, which is kind of what they do, they lure you with their beauty and then kill you, but she was just a different one. But anyway, it turns out that for a little extra initiative, Barbosa has been capturing poison dart frogs since they landed, and poisoned his sword with it, I guess, to have an advantage against Blackbeard. And in the end, Bar Barbosa actually does kill him, but it's kind of funny because he tries to get eternal life. Jack tricks him because he knows Blackbeard is only in there for himself, so he switches the cups and says that the one with the mermaid's tear is actually the one without it. So he says, this is the one with the mermaid's tear. You have one choice, save your daughter or save yourself. He quickly grabs the one with the mermaid's tear and drinks it. And Angelica, who's perfectly willing and wants to save her father, she unknowingly drinks the one that ends up stealing all the years of life that her father has. Then she wants to kill Jack. So Jack, knowing this, throws her on an island, leaves her there. It's on a well-traveled route, so she won't be there for long. Leaves her with the pistol with the one shot like the first movie. The only thing is, like... She shoot, tries to shoot him as he's rowing off, and she misses. The funny thing is, I didn't realize this because I left before the credits were done, but in a post credit scene, this voodoo doll that Blackbeard was using to torture Jack Sparrow actually washes up on the shore. So she's going to get her revenge, and that's probably hinting at another sequel. This is going to go on forever, I think. Barbosa forsakes his ways as a, pi as a privateer. He becomes a pirate again, captaining the Green Ant's Revenge. Meanwhile, Jack and Gibbs actually plundered all the ship in the bottles from the Blackbeard's cabin. So they're on their way to make a fleet, once they can figure out how to restore the ships. I mean, I would assume you just break the bottle, but it's probably more complicated than that. All in all, a good movie. I really only have one nitpick about this movie that I did not like. And that was Blackbeard's height. I mean, Blackbeard is historically documented to have been at least six foot three, six foot four inches tall. So, but he was pretty much shorter than everybody. He was shorter than Jack Sparrow. He was around the same height as Penelope Cruz. Now, the guy that plays him, um, crap, I can't think of his name. Uh, give me a second. The guy that plays Blackbeard, his name is Ian McShane. Yeah, that was it. Um, I had a blank there. Ian McShane is the same height as John Depp, maybe an inch shorter. But I guess because of the boots that Penelope Cruz is wearing, she appeared to be the same height. I just feel like I wasn't intimidated by Blackbeard pre Blackbeard's presence as much as I thought I should have been. And I thought they would maybe do the thing where they put him on platforms or put him on a higher surface so he'd appear taller. But no, he was clearly short around everybody. The only characters in that movie that could have been short should have been shorter than him were those giant zombies that he used as slaves. But other than that, it was a great movie. My only nitpick is I think Blackbeard should have been taller to give him a more intimidating presence. Because I felt like he should have been much more frightening. And that would have added to it. But other than that, good movie. I give it a three and a half to four out of five. Not like the paper that gave it a one and a half. Go see it. It's pretty cool. Great series. Later.